Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the Matching Grants for Giving Tuesday uh, webinar for 2023. My name is Lisa. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause, and I'm excited to dive deep into matching grants. I'm sure everyone's favorite topic to talk about. Um, as people um, come in, feel free to continue introducing yourself in the chat. Um, so today we'll be going over um, an overview of matching grants. We'll first be going over some matching grants basics. What is a matching grant? Why use a matching grant? Some matching grant strategies you can implement. How do you secure a match? Where do you go to look for a match? How do you create a match on the platform once you've secured it? And then what do you do with the match? How do you promote it um, to your supporters and your network? we we'll then have uh, questions and answers at the very end, um, but feel free to ask your questions in the questions and answer box on your Zoom dashboard. Um, and if there is a moment um, during the webinar, I'll take a look and help try to help answer questions, but we'll have a dedicated air time at the end. So just a quick brief overview of Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday this year, November 28th. Every year, Mighty Cause hosts a Giving Tuesday event on our platform. Uh, you can register at givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Um, it is a 27 hour event. So it starts midnight um, on the 28th and then it goes into midnight Pacific time on the 29th. So 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 29th. Uh, early giving for Giving Tuesday uh, starts November 14th, which means that any donations you receive on the platform starting November 14th will count towards any leaderboards or prizes for Giving Tuesday on our platform. Um, registration closes at the end of the month. So you wanna make sure that you get registered as soon as possible. Um, just a, some quick things about registering for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, um, some of the things that we provide, on the platform, we provide all of the fundraising tools that you'll need in order to utilize matching grants, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, customizing your checkout form. We have recordings and trainings just like um, this one that you're attending. We also have uh, a lot of resources, email templates, graphics that you can use for Giving Tuesday in your campaign. And most importantly, we'll also have leaderboards and prizes um, for your chance to win some prizes for your nonprofit. All right, so let's get to the meat of this webinar, matching grants. So what exactly is a matching grant? Some of you joining have used a matching grant before or are, have heard of it, know a little bit about it, and some may be completely new to the concept of matching grants. So, so a matching grant is a fundraising strategy or a fundraising tool that's used as a donation incentive to donors and supporters. Um, typically, it's a large donation that you're able to secure um, and you're offering it as the title, a match for incoming donations that you get. And typically, you would first secure a large donation, promote your match, and then donors would give to towards the match. Um, and so you would be securing it before Giving Tuesday or your campaign. One of the reasons why matching grants is such a popular fundraising strategy and tool and also a really effective fundraising strategy and tool is that it's also a marketing tool. It helps motivate your donors to give immediately. Um, in this image, you should um, see a Facebook post um, that says, want to double your donation. Um, language like that is motivating and incentivizes donors not only to give, but to give immediately and also to possibly give more because their donation is making a larger impact. Um, so on our platform, there are different types of matching grants that you can create. And we'll go through in detail all of these different types of matches later in the webinar but just so that we have an understanding of the different types of matches that are available. The most common type of match is a one-to-one -one match. So dollar for dollar, someone gives $5, it means that $5 was matched. So it's like a $10 gift. 
um, you can have a percentage match. So maybe it's not match just 100%, but 300%, um, or a what we call a cumulative threshold match. So if you're able to raise $1,000, you get $1,000, or you have to reach a certain amount of donors or donations in order to receive the match. So there's different types of matches, and we'll also talk about when you would use that type of match, why you would use it, et cetera. So there's a lot of talk always about matching grants and how important they are or how effective they are, but just to also give you guys some context. So according to Double the Donation, 84% of donors say that they are more likely to donate if a match is offered to an organization. So that's most donors are saying then they're more likely. Um, also, according to Double the Donation, one in three supporters stated that they'd increase the size of their donation if they knew it would be matched. And so that could mean a huge difference depending on what your goal is for your event. Um, in 2022, um, donations on Giving Tuesday alone counted for 3% of the total online revenue for the year, which means that Giving Tuesday in particular is one of the most important days for fundraising. If 3% of total online revenue um, was a, from Giving Tuesday. So that's why how matching grants plays an important role for Giving Tuesday. So as I mentioned, a couple of huge reasons why utilizing a matching grant is helpful is that it acts as a buy one, get one deal for donors, right? It motivates them because they're making their gift go further. They're seeing their impact, they're seeing a larger impact with the dollars that they're giving. On the other side, it's also a stewardship opportunity um, in terms of a major donor that you work with, or you know, maybe a local business that you worked with. Um, it's an opportunity for someone to get involved with your nonprofit in a different capacity. Um, we will talk about this a little later on, but it's also a way maybe for your board members to get involved and to pool their funds together to offer a match. Um, matching grants also, as you've seen, since they're such a great motivator and they really drive volume in a short period of time, like a campaign such as Giving Tuesday, where it's a singular day that people are trying to raise money and there's a lot of competition for people, um, a lot of nonprofits looking to um, you know, raise money on that day. So in terms of matching grants and donor engagement, um, it's a really valuable offer, as I mentioned, with all of the competition occurring on Giving Tuesday of telling a donor that they can maximize their gift um, for your nonprofit. And in terms of a grantor, as I mentioned, um, it's an opportunity for their large gift. If they're, you know, write you a check maybe once a year for a thousand dollars, their opportunity to make that thousand dollars go even further and really turn into two thousand dollars, for example, by providing a match for your nonprofit. In terms of sponsorships, companies, local businesses, it's also a good opportunity to kind of break the ice in terms of you know working with sponsors or working with a sponsor or business that you have some sort of rapport with before. Um, for them, it's an opportunity to be recognized in their community to share their philanthropic initiatives that they're doing as a company or a business and to build that reputation within their community. And as well, it's in a, a way for you guys to build engagement together. If you're sharing their logo and they are sharing um, your nonprofit with their network of people, you guys are supporting each other for the greater good. In terms of matching grants and giving Tuesday, as I also said, it's a big uh, urgency uh, call to action that you're creating. You're letting donors know that this is the time to make a gift for your nonprofit. This is the time to double your impact. Um, and especially when there are prizes and leaderboards that are based off a certain 
time of the day, hourly prizes, et cetera. Again, it helps kind of build that urgency for your nonprofit. All right, now that we've gone through just some of the basics about matching grants, what they are, why to use it, we're gonna talk about some strategies for matching grants. So before we jump fully deep into strategies, we have to step back a little bit because before we take any action, we have to figure out why are we taking action? So it's really important to figure out what are your goals for your Giving Tuesday campaign? What are you trying to accomplish? Are you looking to raise more money this year? Do you want more donors? Are you looking for more donations? Do you, you know, want to uh, work with a local business in the community? It's important to consider what is your overall goal because then that will help figure out what strategy you should implement for your campaign and what type of matching grant strategy you want to utilize. So you want to think about what's your overall kind of high level goal for uh, your campaign. Some goal examples to think about is, are you looking to increase the total amount given? Are you looking to increase the total number of givers that you have? Or are you looking to increase your average donation size or increase your repeat donors? Maybe you're looking to target a specific audience in your support network or increase the visibility, as I mentioned, of a, a local business um, or another organization that you're working with. Um, so these are just a couple of goal examples to think about as you start planning your campaign and your matching grant strategy. So one goal for some nonprofits may be donor acquisition. Um, so for a goal such as donor acquisition, having a goal such as having a match that's based off unique donors may be something that would be really beneficial because that pushes your uh, organization to reach out to individuals saying, hey, if we receive five donors, then we'll be able to reach our goal. And it's not based off how much they give, it's just about them giving. So this is your opportunity to mobilize your whole army of supporters, your social networks. Again, kind of driving home, we're just looking for donors. It doesn't matter how much they're giving. Our goal is to reach this match based off X amount of donors. And this can be really helpful, uh, or what can be really helpful for also driving a match that's based off donor acquisition is including donation levels in your descriptions for your communication. You know, how much dollars can impact your organization? Maybe that's $10 will purchase a backpack for a student and $25 sponsors a lunch meal, et cetera. Those description levels then help motivate donors to give the amount that you're looking for, um, that would make a huge impact for your nonprofit. If the goal is donor engagement, you want donors to be more engaged with your campaign, with your nonprofit, then you might want to consider creating a match that's based off the certain amount of donations that you receive. So it doesn't matter if a donor has given once, you're really looking for as many donations as you can get to uh, reach your match goal. So that would mean after you've, for example, if the goal is 100 donations to receive $1,000, you're sharing that within your network um, and having that language shared that you just need one more donation or two more donations to reach that goal, engaging your donors to kind of also share that message within their community. Matching grants are also a great tool to use at the beginning of a campaign or even at the end of the campaign. So especially for Giving Tuesday, it's a really great opportunity to kick off your campaign with, it's the start of Giving Tuesday, this is our campaign, help us build momentum um, by doubling your impact through this match. It gets donors excited about your participation in the event, and it's a great kick off to your communication and the tone that you're setting in all of your language. Um, 
So as I mentioned, this is also a matching grant um, is also a really great way to close out a campaign or Giving Tuesday. Um, it's a way to kind of push through those final, the your goals that you're looking to meet. So if you're on those last hours and you still haven't reached your goal, uh, or there's another goal that you're looking to meet, as I mentioned, like you're trying to retain donors or increase your average donation size, um, this could be the opportunity to really push people at the very end of, hey, this is your last opportunity. These are the last couple of hours. Here's your opportunity to make a larger impact right now. One thing we'll talk about um, in a second as I go through kind of the technical side of creating matching grants and um, using them is using multiple matching grants. Um, if you're fortunate enough to have a, a more than one grantor, um, you wanna consider queuing your matching grants so that they start one after the other, so that you have a matching grant throughout the entire day or through a specific period in time to help build momentum throughout the entire day. Um, you can create just one large matching grant if you want, or you can create smaller ones, again, depending on if you're looking to win certain prizes for certain hours, et cetera. And you also don't have to stick to one type of matching grant if you do have more than one. If you want one to be dollar for dollar and another one to be based off how many donors that you receive, you can create different matching grants dependent on what you need or what your goals are. So I talked about this a little before, but one um, great opportunity for matching grants and a strategy that you can implement is a board challenge or a board pool. Um, We've seen this really often um, where board members come together, they pull together funds for a matching grant. Um, sometimes if your organization has certain board participation requirements or dues, et cetera, that board members are required, this could be a really great opportunity to utilize that. Um, so by having them involved also in your Giving Tuesday event, it helps also you know, with getting that communication out to your network of people um, because they're going to be reaching out to their network of family, friends, coworkers, et cetera, letting them know their participation in the event and how people can make an impact. Um, one of the things that also often in combination with kind of matching grants is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, as you see in the screenshot to the right, where uh, board members will uh, have their own fundraising page where they can have their network of people make a donation and um, support their cause by supporting them through a fundraising page. Uh, we have a webinar coming up later this month that's specifically about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So if you're interested in learning more about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, please sign up for that webinar where we'll, we'll dive deep into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, corporate matches, but this is also a really great strategy to utilize for Giving Tuesday because as we mentioned that it's a really good opportunity for companies who are interested in creating a, a philanthropic initiative for their organization or currently have a philanthropic mission for their organization to, you know, get involved with an organization. Um, it's more than just writing a check and saying, oh, we made a gift to a nonprofit, right? They have their logo displayed. They sh they can share with their customers or their network um, the impact that they're making for an organization or their employees. Um, so this is your opportunity to also share that, you know, their branding on your email communication. So that is an additional benefit for them as well. Um, on Instagram and Facebook, you can utilize collab posting to, um, again, kind of use that uh, uh, social media to share that communication even further for them and yourself. All right, so we've talked a lot about what is a matching grant, matching grant strategies, and that's helpful to 
think through exactly what are your goals? What are you looking to accomplish? What uh, type of match do you want to create? All of those questions and answers are really important to then figuring out, okay, well, who do I go to? Who can provide this based off what I want to do? Who do I go to? How do I get this? Um, so there are a couple of different avenues you can go to in, in terms of who provides exactly a matching grant. It can be board members or trustees, major donors, sponsors or partners, or collectives, groups of people. At the end of the day, there's no specific type of person per se that provides a match. A match can be provided by anyone or anything. Um, but these are the most common types of groups that provide matching grants to nonprofits. So as we talked about, board members are a really popular type of uh, grantor. Um, so either can be an individual board member or trustee, or it could be your board members coming together and pooling funds for your nonprofit. Uh, and that can be called, you know, board members batch. It doesn't necessarily have to, you know, shout them out individually, or you could if that's something that they would want. Major donors. So as we've talked about, it's a different way for a donor to have a relationship with your nonprofit. They're not just writing a check or they're not just making an annual gift where they're kind of doing it mindlessly. It's a way for them to also make a larger impact for your nonprofit and, and support your nonprofit in a different way. Sponsors or partners, local businesses or companies and collectives could be, you know, you have a group of volunteers, staff members, maybe it's alumni if you have alumni for your organization. Um, this could be any group of people that is in your organization's inner circle. So what are the steps of then securing a matching grant? So first we have to prospect. So the process of identifying potential sources of a matching grant, who are we trying to reach out to? The act of actually reaching out and starting the conversation and then getting the commitment, making the ask for a match. How do you explain that? So in terms of um, prospecting, factors to consider is affinity. So how are they connected to your cause or nonprofit? Are they completely have no connection to your nonprofit or are they a major donor that has given every year for the past 10 years? Do they have a history of giving to your nonprofit or organizations like yours? Maybe they are really passionate about a specific mission, but there may be, you know, a donor that you've interacted with or have given once, but they ha you haven't built that relationship. And then can this prospect give at a higher level? So typically matching grants are um, larger gifts. Now there's no rules about what a matching grant is. A matching grant can be $500, a matching grant can be $50,000. Um, but can this person give at a donation level that would actually motivate donors to give, right? So if someone sees that, okay, if I give, this nonprofit could potentially get $1,000, I'm gonna be more motivated if it's, you know, if it's just $10, um, if I make a dollar gift. Um, so you first want to think about your network of people. Um, I've talked about, you know, has your board members made a commitment, um, you know, to the financial well being of your nonprofit? Um, are they, would they be then a natural fit for you? Can they pull their funds together? Are there major donors that, um, you know, you've had a relationship with that they've given to you before? And are there any sponsors or um, are there any companies or businesses that you've worked with or other organizations that would um, be interested in supporting your organization in a different way? So I am going to take just a minute and just for you to think about what are who would be willing in your support network to provide a matching grant. Um, so just like as a homework assignment, we'll take a minute now, but 
spending two to three minutes and writing down like three prospective people you can reach out to about providing a match. And if you don't, can't think of anyone to think about, who are three people that you think can help you in this, you know, goal of creating a match and who can help you find a match grantor. So I'm just going to take one minute if you want to just think about it a little bit. And then um, as you guys are thinking about it, I'm going to just check any questions. And as you're thinking about this, um, if you don't utilize a CRM system, create a spreadsheet to track you know, who are your potential prospects and logging what your conversations are, where you're at with them. Um, if you have volunteers or a team of people that you can work with, assigning each person a contact to reach out with, um, hearing from multiple people at your organization sometimes can be confusing and frustrating for a donor. So you want to make sure it's people that, uh, you know, maybe have a relationship with that individual or, um, you know, they're, they're not being passed around. Um, and keep notes on the conversation that you're having, because if they're maybe not willing to provide a match this year, there might be a different conversation of different ways that they can support your nonprofit or get involved in your nonprofit or provide a match next year. Okay, I'm just going to go through some of the questions while I see them here. It would take a minute. Um, so it says on your website, there is no registration for Giving Tuesday. You did say, do we need to register? Um, if you're interested in registering for Giving Tuesday, you can go to givingtuesday.mightycause.com. You should see a registration button um, and you can register to participate. Should a donor offer to make a donation before or after others donate? In other words, is a matching grant best offered before or after others donate? Um, so Again, that's kind of dependent on what's your strategy and what's your goal, right? So if there's a certain prize during a certain hour that you're looking to potentially win, um, that's that's okay if people gave throughout the day because your goal is from five to six, we have a match, make your donation now um, so that you know we could potentially win a prize, but this is your time to double your impact. Um, Creating, making a match that, you know, is supposed to last for a certain time period isn't bad because it, again, kind of creates that incentive for people to make a gift at that time. It doesn't have to be for a certain hour. It can be throughout the entire day if you want. But, um, yeah, it doesn't have to. It just depends on kind of what your goal is or, or how you're trying to promote your match. Um, Okay, so one other question. Say our board pools $1,000. What's an example to leverage that as a matching grant rather than just a donation from a board? We already know $1,000 is guaranteed from them. How does that make it a matching grant? That's a really great question. And a question that really, really get often is they'll already have a large donation come in and they're, you know, a nonprofit as well. So, well, how, how do I turn this into a match, right? So I think the key is remembering is a match is an, a marketing tool or an incentive tool to get donors to give, right? If if you were shopping somewhere and you see a sale that says buy one, get one free, right? You're more likely to buy that product. It's the same thing here. If a donor sees that, okay, if you make a donation today, you're going to double your impact. If you make a donation of $5, it really means $10. I'm more likely to say, oh, I've been meaning to donate to this organization. I keep forgetting to, if I make a donation now, oh, it's gonna make a larger impact. Or 
actually, you know what? I was only going to give $5, but you know what? I'll give $20 because I see I'm kind of like doubling my gift right now because they have a match. So that is the kind of strategy in terms of matching grants. So it's telling donors that by that by raising a thousand dollars, your board is going to give you a thousand dollars, and you need that thousand dollars raised um, for uh, to receive those funds. Maybe okay. If the match is not met, then does the board not actually donate the pool thousand dollars? Um, so that's kind of dependent. So on you, it doesn't. Um, for a lot of organizations, they're still able to receive the full amount. For other organizations, it's dependent on the grantor and, and what they've kind of agreed with the grantor. Um, it really just depends on, you know, what your agreement is with your board or your grantor that you're working with. Huh? But a grantor still providing you the full amount, that's perfectly normal still. Uh, how do you suggest collecting the funds for a matching grant pool? We'll talk about that in a second. Do you have any sample letters you can use to send to possible donors? Yes. Um, we, we, uh, I will provide that after the webinar. Um, and are the hourly prizes and standards figured out yet? Um, so we'll be releasing prize information coming up this month. It hasn't been released yet. So we'll send out an email, um, to everyone about what our um, prizes and incentives are this year. Okay, I will move on, oops. All right, so outreach. Um, for outreach, so to start the conversation, picking up the phone, setting up a call, sending out an email, um, we'll, I'll send out a kind of sample email after this webinar. Uh, that you guys can use to send out to a major donor, um, asking them about providing, potentially providing a match. Um, if you've already kind of cultivated that relationship, if not, you want to make sure that, um, you know, you kind of get to know exactly, you know, why are they interested in your organization? What, what about your organization, you know, do they appreciate or want to support, et cetera, because knowing their relationship with you can help kind of direct uh, you to figure out what is the best kind of avenue for that potential match grantor. So if they're, you know, really passionate about a specific program or mission that you have, maybe you want to set up a campaign for that specific program and the match is just related to that specific program. Right, so you wanna think about what is their relationship with your organization. And you also want to kind of set some qualifying questions or ask some qualifying questions in terms of, um, you know, would they be receptive to providing a matching grant? What is, as well as providing, you know, clarification of what this year is looking like for you as an organization or what your goals are, um, Impact, what your goals or missions are for this year and next year. So if you have already a connection with a nonprofit or a donor, uh, it's going to be last time because they know your organization. If they've kept giving, they feel passionate about your gift, they're giving to you for a reason. So they're going to be, you know, more flexible in terms of what, you know, kind of understanding exactly why this would make an impact for your organization. Um, and also understanding of exactly if you are reaching out a major donor, is this maybe an older donor that would prefer a phone call or a face-to-face -face interaction? Or are they someone who's really busy and would just prefer a quick email? Um, one thing to consider is that um, for when you are making your ask is that you most likely will have to maybe explain what a matching grant is, why it's impactful. And in the uh, email demo, uh, the dummy email I'll send over, um, that will kind of break it down a bit. But you may need to explain to them, hey, this is what a matching grant does. This is why it's helpful. And this is why it's a strategy that we're looking for. Um, 
but using information about that donor, as I mentioned, about what their preferences, capacity, or um, what their interests are, I think play, is a major benefit in helping kind of secure a match from a grantor. So if it's a sponsor or a local business, it's this is an opportunity for us to share your logo, to share on social media, for you to share your philanthropic initiative. If it's a major donor, as I've talked about, it's a way to make a larger impact this year than you've done before. Um, it's a way to kind of help our nonprofit in a different way than you have. Um, so tips for making your ask. We've talked about breaking down matching grants. Not everyone understands it. So making sure they understand exactly what it is. What are they actually you know, agreeing to in terms of having a matching grant, um, being prepared to ask questions about your campaign, what your goals are, what exactly are you looking to accomplish with these match dollars, um, and just keeping it really simple um, and easy. You don't have to overly complicate the ask um, or, or, you know, kind of try to, uh, not be direct in terms of what you're looking for. And if you are not the executive director of your organization, maybe having the executive, your executive director or your major gifts officer um, on the call um, or in communication with this um, can be helpful in terms of, again, getting across um, how important this is. And it makes it a little bit less difficult for someone to say no if it's coming from the executive director. All right, so let's dive into a little bit about what you do depending on the answer you get. So if you reach out to a grantor and they say, yes, I'm all here for it. I want to support you guys. Great. Of course, say thank you, send out um, your appreciation, but you want to also hammer out the details and be um, completely on the same page as to what your match entails. So how much will the match be? How will it function? So is it based off how many donors you receive or is it just dollar for dollar? And when do you need those funds? When should they provide it? Typically a matching grant is provided after the match has been met. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Maybe a donor gives you a check beforehand or your board has already pulled that money for, to, um, to, for you. Um, but if you're working with a new, uh, a new donor, or this is the first time for a grantor, uh, typically it happens after the match has been met. Um, you can also talk about expectations and goals in terms of, you know, if they have a logo that they need, are they, if it is a business, are they looking for any reporting or information on it? And as well, do they want to be anonymous or do they want their name publicly shown? Do they want their name included in emails or a certain image to be included in communication? All right, so a lot of the times you may get a no, someone who's not ready or at this time can't um, provide a grant um, and that's perfectly okay. Um, don't despair because through that process, there's a lot to be learned. And this may, as I mentioned, just be not the current time for them for this avenue, but they might be able to support your organization in a different way. Or maybe it's something that they're interested in doing next year because they've already allocated those funds elsewhere. So a no is just a no for now, and it could be a future yes. So definitely make sure you note that down and um, engage with those donors down the line. Uh, so if a grantor has agreed to um, provide a matching grant, um, you want to make this like a fun experience for the grantor, not something for them to be concerned about or something that's overly complicated. Um, you know, sharing with them your social posts about how this is going to make a large impact or when you've reached your goal um, so that they can see that you know, how much money that you've been able to raise because they were able to provide a match. And as well, make a note as how often are you touching base with the grantor? Some grantors are, it's an easy process where all you have to tell them is when the grant 
is met, they make the donation, et cetera. And some want more engagement. They want to kind of be in the process or know how it's going. And lastly, of course, you wanna make sure you have a thank you prepared for the grantor and their generosity. Um, is that something that you wanna do publicly or is it just like a private thank you email that you wanna share um, to the grantor? All right, so we're gonna go through some of the technical aspects of creating a matching grant on the platform once you've secured a matching grant. All right, so through the Mighty Cause dashboard, uh, you'll see that there is a fundraising tool section and a matching grant section. So within the dashboard, that's where you'll want to go to create a matching grant on the platform. When you create a matching grant, you'll have the opportunity to add a logo, add how much your match is, and also set a date and time of when the match starts and ends. And we'll go through, break down each parts of this creation process. So one of the things that you'll have to do when you do create a match on the platform is choose what is your match type. So what type of match are you looking to create? The most common type of match, and it's going to be auto enabled because it's the most popular, is match a percentage of each donation 100%, meaning it's a one-to-one -one match. As we've talked about, that means if someone gives $5, your nonprofit gets $10. So um, standard one-to-one -one match. Um, However, if you are, again, based off the goals that you need, let's say that you plan on, you're very fortunate, you have a lot, a lot of large donors, and you want this to really motivate and incentivize people who give less. So maybe you want to have a maximum dollar amount per donation. So if I select match up to a maximum dollar amount per donation, as you see here, it means that if someone, if I set my max to $1,000, if someone gives over $1,000, they get $2,000, their donation's only gonna be matched up to $1,000. So that's why, again, it's important to figure out what's your goal in when it comes to then setting up these matches. Uh, so here's um, an example of also different percentages that you can set. It doesn't have to just be 100%, it can be maybe 50% met per donation or 300% um, per donation. All right, cumulative threshold match. Um, there's three types of matches that are within cumulative threshold match. So the first being apply total match when total dollars raised equals the match value. Sounds a little confusing and a lot of people confuse this type of match with the one-to-one -one match that I showed you, the uh, 100%. Um, so what this match essentially means is that it works kind of like a Kickstarter campaign if you're familiar with Kickstarter. It's saying that if I, if I have a match of $500, I have to raise $500 to get the $500. As opposed to if this was, if I just slide back here, this was a match a percentage of each donation um i don't have to meet the match to get those funds it's you know if i get five dollars that will be automatically matched this is saying only apply the match when i reach that level um, so organizations need to raise that full amount to receive it um, again there's no right or wrong answer here in terms of how you set it up it really just depends on what are you looking for? What do you need? How do you want to market this to your donors? Um, for some, maybe you do want to have it say, um, you know, have it this type because you really want to motivate donors to give so you reach your goal. The second type of cumulative threshold match is apply total match when a certain quantity of donations is received. So this is based off total donations received on the um, on the platform for you to uh, receive a matching grant. So if one donor donates twice, it's gonna be counted as two donations. So it's only looking at the donations that you're bringing in. And then apply total match when a certain number of unique donors is reached. So the difference between donors and donations is that 
it's looking at the individual that gives. So if one donor donates twice, they're only going to be counted once, as opposed to if we're just looking at donations, we don't, we're not looking at the donor. We don't care. One donor could donate a million times and it would be counted a million times. In this case, one donor donates a million times, only going to count once because we're looking at donors in particular. Um, on when you create your match, you're also going to see some match conditions. Um, so you'll automatically have include offline donations in the match enabled and include organization fundraisers in the match enabled. Um, you can disable this if you would like. Um, one thing to just be aware of for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause is offline donations don't count towards leaderboards and prizes. That doesn't mean that your match can't count those, but just for you to be cognizant of in terms of leaderboards that offline donations don't count. Set a minimum per donation amount before match is applied. Um, so that would mean that if you are trying to motivate for donors to give more, so you want donors, you just don't want people giving $5. You want people to, um, you know, you want to push your network and maybe, or maybe it's a specific, you know, you have two matches and this is the second match that you have that's really catered to your large donors. Um, maybe your minimum is $50. So people have to give at least $50 for your match to be applied. Again, we kind of go back to like, what are your goals? Maybe if you're trying to, um, your goal is to increase your average donation size, maybe you want to utilize this condition so that you say, hey, donations that are $50 or higher, their donations are going to be matched, motivating people to give um, again at a higher amount. And then apply match once per donor. So if you're, if you are going to have donors, uh, you know, donate more than once to your organization, you want to make sure that the match is only applied once for them, you can also choose that. For the email section, um, this is going to be uh, the email address uh, that will receive an email once the grant has been completed. Um, so that can be you. You can put in your own email address. But you can also put in your most, I would recommend putting the grantor's email address um, because then they will receive an email saying, hey, your match has been met. Now you can go and fulfill your match. Um, but of course you can choose how you want, you know, um, who you want to receive that communication. Um, another uh, option you'll see on uh, the match creator when you create a match on the platform is something called include match value and page metrics. This always stumps people. So I wanted to take a moment and kind of describe what that means and what it does. So include match value and page metrics means that if you have this enabled, your match value, let's say it's $1,000. Um, if someone makes a $5 gift and it's matched, your metrics on your org page will jump by $10. So your metrics will automatically see that jump. Um, so if you have a grantor that's planning to fulfill their match offline, I would recommend uh, keeping this enabled and you don't have to add an offline gift then um, to kind of for their, for their grant. So um, you can just have this enabled and your metrics will be accurate at the end. If your grantor is planning on fulfilling it online, you may want to consider um, either you can keep this enabled and I'll show you <laughs> how you can keep this enabled, um, but you may want to consider disabling this if you think your grantor is going to um, make it your gift online so that your metrics are accurate. Otherwise, it will be inflated if you have this enabled and your grantor goes and makes their gift online. And as I mentioned, only online donations count towards leaderboards or prices. So something to be cognizant of when you are creating your match, and I have a typo in here uh, that sh this should be November 14th, um, is the date and time that you set for your match. So you want to make sure that you're setting your date and time to the date that you want and time that you want when your match starts. 
your match will start and end based off the timing that you put here. So this is really important to review and double check that you have exactly the date and time that you want because otherwise everything happens automatically. Once you set that date and time, at that date and time, it will become live. And if it hasn't been fulfilled by that end date, it will close by that end date. And one thing also to understand about matches is that matches work independent from each other. What I mean by that is if you have multiple matches, donations will count towards a match based off just that match's conditions. It doesn't look at the collective matches in total. Um, so if you set a match to be a certain date and time and certain conditions, and then you set another match to be a certain date and time and conditions, donations are gonna be matched just based off both of those matches individually. So one thing that you may um, want to do, and it will be set up, it will it will be automatically enabled once you create your, a sec, uh, your, after you've created a match, if you go to create a second match, you'll see that this is automatically enabled, but it's queuing your match, uh, your second match or your third match to start after another match. As I mentioned, if you haven't created a match yet, you're not gonna see this option because in order to queue a match to start, you first have to have at least one match upcoming or currently live. So once you create your first match, when you create your second match, you'll see this option and you can set a second match or you know third match, fourth match, et cetera, to start after a match ends. So once a match ends, the next one begins and you don't have to do anything to queue it up. All right, so this is, oops cut off a bit, let me go back. Um, but once your match closes, um, if your grantor is looking to fulfill their donation online, there is a fulfillment link that you can send to them. Um, so if you prefer, as we showed in the creation process, to just add your own email, and then you later on wanna provide them a link, um, you can go to your match, um, past matches and your um, match, report or match a manager, and you can access a fulfillment link that you can send them. Um, when you send them this fulfillment link and they make a donation through the fulfillment link, uh, our system will automatically mark it as uh, this match is fulfilled. Um, one thing to be cognizant of is if you are having multiple matches going on, if a grantor makes a gift while you have another match active, that their donation will count towards another match. So you wanna make sure that if you have grantors that are making their gift online through the platform, that it's during a period where you don't have um, another grant um, currently happening. If you run into any issues, call our support or reach out to our support team and we'll be able to help troubleshoot um, any of those issues. All right, so a couple of questions. I know we're coming to the end. Um, does a matching grant have to be processed online? No, it does not. A uh, matching grant can be processed however you want, but as I mentioned, only online gifts count towards any Giving Tuesday prizes or leaderboards. Um, why is a ma my match not being included in the leaderboard? Uh, for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause, match values are not counted on leaderboards, only online gifts. Do donations made to peer-to-peer -peer or fundraising pages counts towards the match? That is totally your choice. You can set up a match to count for on your organization for any fundraising campaign you have, or if there is a specific peer-to-peer -peer page that you want to just count the match, you can do that too, and you can set that up on the platform. Can I have more than one matching grant active at the same time? Yes, you can have as many as you want, or you can set them all to be um, sequential. Oh no, I entered my matching grant wrong. What do I do? Not, don't worry. Uh, we work a lot with nonprofits in terms of matching grants. So you are not alone if you're running into any matching grant issues. Um, we are more than happy to help troubleshoot anything. So just reach out to our support team. 
let us know what match you're working on and what issue you're running into. Yeah. When your match becomes live. So once you've set the date and time for your match, uh, it will show up on your org page uh, as with a little sticker on your donate button. So it will let donors know that come to your page, you have a matching grant that's active. And as well, a matching grant tile will be added to your the bottom of your page so that they can see how close you are to um, meeting your match, who is your sponsor, if you are have their name publicly shown, their logo image, et cetera. As well, within the search on Giving Tuesday, there is a filter tool for matching grants. So if there are donors that are looking for organizations that have a matching grant, because they know their donation is going to make a bigger impact, um, there is a filter for donors to find your organization that way as well. All right, we are in the home stretch, promoting your matching grant. All right, so when you're promoting your matching grant, make sure to include that in your communication, in all of your email communication, um, and include that language that we've talked about of a strong call to action of double your impact, make your impact larger this year. Um, this is a part of the appeal of a matching grant is the ability to use that in your communication to nonprofits and building hype also on social media by promoting it as you see in the example on the right, don't miss your chance to double your donation um, this year. Um, as well on your website, if there's a section where you're talking about Giving Tuesday or you're promoting donations, share, share that this is the opportunity to make an impact um, uh, larger this year or at this time. So just wanted to include some screenshots of just a uh, really good social post that include that language of double your donation, this Friday matching grant opportunity, today only your donation doubled, um, give to um, them home. So again, super strong language really gets across. This is the time for a donor to give to an organization. Uh, so, if your organization um, does do like traditional collateral by, you know, signs or flyers or, um, you know, printed material, um, you can send out within your printed material if that's something that you do that you have a match as you see in the screenshot to the right um, for them to give, but also have your team, your volunteers or board members promote that you have this match available. Um, because again, as we keep saying, it's going to make a larger impact for your nonprofit. So anywhere you can promote it in, you know, your email signature or footer that you have a match upcoming or, or going on. All right, we've gone through a lot of stuff. I want to make sure that we have a couple of time for questions. So I'm going to kind of go through some past uh, things and questions that I may have missed. So let's see. Has registration has closed for this year? No, registration for Giving Tuesday has not closed for this year. Will there be some way to highlight the matching grant on our Giving Tuesday page? If so, is there something that shows what that will look like uh, so we can provide an example to potential donors? Yes, so if you go to um, mightycause.com slash search, and I can actually put, pull that up here. Uh, within our search, there is a filter called, uh, I'm sorry, not volunteer opportunities, donations matched. These are all organizations or fundraisers that have a uh, match currently enabled. So you can go to their page, scroll to the bottom and uh, take a screenshot um, or send them a link as to showing them what that looks like. All right. Can you enter more than one email address to be notified after a grant has been fulfilled? No, unfortunately, at this time, it can only be one email address. Um, however, as I mentioned, you always have access to 
um, get a fulfillment link. So if you do want to make that your email address, and then once you get that email that it's been met, you then can send, you know, your email to whomever needs it. Um, but at this time, unfortunately, it's just one email. Will the slide deck be in a follow-up email? Yes. Uh, the slide deck will be, we'll be sending out the slide deck um, and a copy of uh, this webinar in a follow-up email. And I'll also um, include a templated email language that you can use to send out to donors for matching grants. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. I think there's some questions Oops. coming into the chat. So I just want to make sure I don't miss it. All right. Our matching grant, uh, our goal is to provide a matching grant for a recurring donor campaign and are raising a fund to match either one-to-one -one for the first donation and any recurring donation. Do you have any tips for this approach? Um, so on our platform currently, there isn't a way for us to track whether a donor is recurring. So you couldn't filter whether the donation is a recurring um, donation. However, you could um, create a fundraising page like this, where it's specifically dedicated to recurring donations and a recurring donation campaign. And that's where you're sending um, your donors and encouraging them to make a recurring donation. Um, so having maybe a dedicated fundraising page, and then through this fundraising page, you can create a matching grant that's just on this page. Uh -huh. Uh, so there is a previous question about leaderboard context. Um, so leaderboard in, was refer in referring to um, Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. Um, we do have leaderboards. So on our on the Giving Tuesday site. So on Giving Tuesday, when you're looking at leaderboards, sometimes um, orgs will have questions about the totals they'll see here and why it's not including certain gifts. And that's because it just, it only counts online gifts. It doesn't count offline or um, matching grants. Do matching grants coalesce with current campaigns? I'm trying to raise 10K for a program that I'll promote on Giving Tuesday, but want to incorporate a matching grant as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, a perfect opportunity to incorporate a matching grant if you're trying to raise um, $10,000 for a program that you're going to promote on Giving Tuesday. Is it possible to add more than one email address? Uh, I answered that. Is it possible to have this sent via email? Yeah, uh, yes, we talked about providing that. Um, uh, so what is the cost to participate? So for Giving Tuesday, there is no cost to participate. Um, there's just the standard transaction fees that we have on our platform, but there's no upfront cost to participate. So any nonprofit can participate. You guys are more than welcome to. We welcome anyone. Um, we love having kind of a community of nonprofits that are sharing their mission and their impact on our platform and why they're raising money for Giving Tuesday. Um, so all is welcome. Is Matching Grant a service that requires an upgrade in our version of, give of Mighty Cause. Um, so in order to use the matching grant tool uh, that is provided on our Giving Tuesday platform. So if you're registered for Giving Tuesday, you will be able to utilize that. How about a pledge they can't give at this time? So on our platform, donors cannot make pledges. And what I mean in terms of pledges is that a donor can't make a gift and have it set to be processed at a later time. When a gift is made, it is processed at that time. Can donors start donating right now or do they have to wait until November 13th? Um, not November 13th, November 14th for Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. Um, if there's a different event that you're referring to, you wanna check the rules for that event. But in this context, we're just talking about Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause. Um, is this the same for We Give Catholic or is this another platform? We Give Catholic is one of the giving events that um, uses Mighty Cause as their platform provider. They do have access to matching grants tool. Um, however, the rule 
rules in terms of um, offline donations and when donations count, you'll want to check the rules for that event because um, those rules differ. Okay, I am just double checking. I think I covered all of the questions. Um, All right, I don't see any more questions coming in. So I will end the webinar here if there's no other questions coming in. However, this isn't the end of any questions. If you guys need any support, you need clarification on, um, I'm sorry, I just have one the last question. Mighty Cause is the platform used on Give Miami. How does it work? Uh, yeah, so Mighty Cause provides the technology for many giving events. Um, such as Give Miami and We Give Catholic. Um, so this matching grant tool is available on your platform as well. And yes, I'll send out uh, the sample letters um, within the follow-up email for you guys. Um, all right, so yes, as I mentioned, if you guys have any questions, if you're still confused anything about matching grants, trust me, I know it can be confusing please reach out to us, reach out to support at mightycause.com. We're more than happy to help clarify or help set up your match. If you are running into any questions or issues, that's what we're here for. And we want to make sure that you guys are set up for success for Giving Tuesday. That's what we're here for. Um, all right. So I will end uh, the webinar here, but please let us know if you need anything else. Thank you so much. Bye.